Hello everyone, George Rambleman here. It's been almost two weeks, I guess it's been exactly two weeks since I was able to get a ride in where I could actually get a vlog done here. Hold on there, fella. It's been pretty nice weather the last couple of weeks, actually, but I've been just uh, really, really busy with work and other things as well. You know, the last uh, vlog that I did was on a Monday when I was headed into work. And that was a good week. I was actually able to ride to work several times and, and get some really good riding in. And it was it was really nice. I thoroughly enjoyed that. As I said before, it's hard sometimes to find some times to uh, ride. You know, you get so busy. I think we all have that problem. But it was a good week to... To be able to do that and I really really enjoyed it. Uh, here come the Johns Creek police uh, out of the school here so I better be careful. But the last couple of weeks has been has been really busy with traveling and for work and and uh, weekends have been pretty good. Uh, actually the last couple of weekends I've been busy with things around the house. I'm actually hosting a Kind of a spring picnic, a party, social event for my company uh, this coming weekend. It's on Sunday, and we're having you know probably, probably about 30 people coming over to the house. You know, employees and their families. And I tell you, every every year when when my wife and I host this. You know, the few weeks leading up to it is a long list of chores that have to be done. Things that you've been kind of putting off doing around the house. And one of the things my wife did at our house a couple of years ago, really, really a nice project that she did. And, you know, she did 95% of the project and I did maybe 5%. But we have a, you know, my wife is, is really good at gardening and, you know, taking care of the the lawn and and our uh, all, all the gardens and flowers around our house and she's really got it looking like a almost a professional home and garden TV type of lawn and we have a kind of a small backyard but it's got a slope up the back and she said you know this would be a really good place to dig a pond at the bottom of the slope and put a waterfall in and, you know nothing big and huge but just kind of like a stair step down a little waterfall and about a year, I think it was about a year ago, she started working on that. She did all the excavation herself. Really, the only thing that I did was helped her go to the place here in town where they sell these big stones of all kinds and uh, helped move those and place those. But she did all the all the excavation, all the pond work, every you know, all the design work, including putting the liner in, the pump. You know, all that, all that kind of work, and she did a really great job. And you know, a couple of years ago, when we had our, I guess it was last year, when we had the party at our house, everybody was really impressed with it. One of the things that she did, though, she told me she regretted. She really didn't put a, you know, professional quality pond liner in. She used something a little bit cheaper, and it developed a leak. And it was, we tried to patch it a few times, so. Leading up to this party, she just decided she was going to replace that whole pond liner, and I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal. She went out and bought a, actually a rubber, it's a, the official name is EPDM, which is a roofing membrane, which we use in construction for flat roofs. It's like a rubber material that's got some additives, you know, added to it to make it suitable for waterproofing and roofing in pond liners. So she bought that, pretty expensive. And really, we just got through replacing that this past weekend, and that was, we had to remove all these rocks, redo all the liner, you know, water test it. And the last two Saturdays, we've been working on that, and the weather was beautiful on those Saturdays. And then on Sundays, which is, like I've said before, kind of a day of rest for us, it uh, rained. Uh, you know, it cleared up a little bit yesterday, late, but with the... Uh, you know, I was just too tired to, to ride and get anything in. And then the various other projects that we're doing, just just taking up uh, taking up too much time along with, you know, the regular work that I have to do. 
but today I went down and visited one project and did that pretty much in the morning and came home and worked from home a little bit this afternoon and it's just a it rained earlier today but it is it is beautiful right now it's about 7 15 so I probably have another hour or so of daylight left and it's just uh, beautiful and I told my wife I said you know what I'm getting out and taking a little ride and she was kind of joking with me she says are all your YouTube fans like missing you <laughs> and I said well I really don't have I don't think what you would call any YouTube fans I do I, I'm up to like 46 subscribers now which is uh, kind of surprising that uh, 46 people actually care about what I might have to say but it's nice you know nowhere near some of you guys but uh, it's nice to to see that I've got a lot of nice comments you know I've noticed that the a couple of videos I've done reviewing this bike I'm on right now the little walk around video I did and the one riding video I did really gets the most views I think people use YouTube to you know to look for product reviews and bike reviews I know I did when I was looking and and uh, you know a lot of people have, have looked at those videos and made comments and asked questions and it's been fun you know getting back to them and responding to them but last week I had I was uh, up in Ohio and Indiana uh, for three three days I guess I was there I was there for Tuesday through Tuesday through Thursday as it's a like I said before our company we do we do construction monitoring and inspections for for lenders and and folks like that who financed a lot of senior living projects and we have to visit the sites primarily on a monthly basis we we show up there's a big meeting where we meet with the architect and the owner and we review the project and approve all the payments and so I've got these three projects the same three projects two clients I've got one that's in suburban Cincinnati it's really right across the river in Kentucky I fly into Cincinnati on a Tuesday morning do that meeting and inspection on Tuesday afternoon then I've got a client who's doing two very similar projects one in Indiana one in Ohio I drive up to Indianapolis stay overnight then drive up to northern Indiana this little town called Chesterton which is near Valparaiso Indiana do a project there on Wednesday morning and then I drive a pretty good distance across Indiana and Ohio on the Ohio and Indiana turnpikes and get a little town called Waterville Ohio for a meeting Thursday morning then I fly home Thursday night uh, Waterville is near Toledo so that kind of gives you an idea of where it's at northeast Ohio and you know I looked at my rental car I put like 750 miles on my rental car from Cincinnati to Indianapolis to Chesterton to to uh, Waterville back to Cincinnati and I was you know I, I was talking in my last vlog about ha having a hard time finding time to actually ride I had a I had an idea as I was on the plane flying home last Thursday night I said you know I know that there's these there's there are motorcycle rentals out there and I've never rented a motorcycle before from anybody I have um, but I, I know that there's there's some places out there where you can rent them so I got home I started doing a little research and I found a motorcycle rental website it's called Eagle Riders and they rent motorcycles all over the country and I think they're primarily it's kind of a franchise thing where a motorcycle dealer whether it be a Harley or a, or a power sports type place that does you know metric and Japanese bikes will we'll set this thing up and so I looked at I said you know what, what you know I, I'll do all that driving for these uh, these projects you know it, it might be kind of fun to rather than just driving in a rental car if, if I pick a nice time of the year when the weather's nice you know maybe I should just uh, kind of travel light figure out how to travel as light as I can and uh, actually maybe try to rent a motorcycle and make that little middle uh, route and I was thinking about it and you know there's pros and cons to it for me number one I would have to dress light and pack light 
because it's you know it's out of town for three days and if I'm on a motorcycle I'm obviously limited in what I can do and uh, it's a lot of riding uh, but there's a lot of when I looked at the map obviously I could stay on the interstate highways the whole time if I wanted to but I could also um, you know take two lane roads which would add the drive time and I think that's the thing that concerns me most I think the most that I have to drive to any one time is about 140 or 150 miles. Now, the one day that I start off in Indianapolis and go up to Chesterton, that's a about a two-hour drive from Indianapolis up there. Then from Chesterton to Waterville is a lot longer. That would be a long day. And on a motorcycle, I'm not sure. So I'm kind of thinking, well, you know, maybe I'd try to redo the schedule a little bit so maybe I could hit the project in Northeast Ohio, the last one of the day, I could do that maybe in, in, uh, on Friday and give myself an extra day to, to get there, just not to overdo it all in one day. So I was thinking, I've been thinking about it and, uh, you know, obviously it costs a lot more. You know, we bill our travel costs to the client. Obviously I can't bill them, you know, top dollar what it would cost to rent a motorcycle but I found this place in Columbus Ohio and I'm not sure exactly I, I, obviously it's an Indian dealer because there's only two places in Ohio one's in Cleveland which is not really convenient for me and the other one's in Columbus and uh, it's uh, they rent Indian motorcycles and or, or Hondas and the only Honda they really had on their site was a Goldwing which I'm not really interested in but you know the the Indians I am interested in I said, well, this is, I killed two birds with one snow in here. I could, I could, uh, you know, conduct my business for the week, have fun being out riding on a motorcycle and get to test, you know, give a, one of the Indians I might be interested in a really good three-day test. And I thought, man, that might be something worth, uh, worth checking out here. So I'm thinking about it. Roughly the rental car costs for me over about a three three day period is I don't know two hundred and two hundred fifty dollars. It'd be easily double that with the motorcycle. I think the Indian Springfield and the Indian Chieftain are both the same amount, and uh, they are about a hundred and fifty dollars a day to rent them. Then you get all these little junk fees, and you got insurance and various things you'd have to add to it. So it would be about double the price, which obviously obviously would have to come out of my pocket. But, uh, you know, I, I, would, I would consider doing that. And uh, so, something I'm thinking about. So if you guys got any comments, if you've ever rented a motorcycle, you know, what's it like? What do you think about that idea? You know, in some ways I think, eh, maybe you should just wait until, you know, you've actually got some vacation time and you can kind of ride more leisurely and not have to be in one place or the other. And I, I, I have thought about that. But then again, I think, eh, you know, you complain about having uh, a hard time finding time to ride. This would be three, three pretty full days. So hold on here. This guy scares me getting in that lane. Here you go. Anyway, that's about all that's on my mind tonight. I'm just glad to be out here taking a little break from all the all the reports I'm trying to write and all the clients I'm trying to satisfy and uh, and my toughest client, my wife, who's. Uh, Got me on her honeydew list, working my way down that list, and I'm, I'm getting close to being there. I'm not quite done, but I'm getting close to it. Okay, guys, I see my fuel warning light is on, which means I probably got about a gallon left. I don't like to drain these things too low, so I'm going to find a find a gas station, fuel this thing up, and uh, continue to ride. Okay, guys, have a good week. This is George Ramlin Man here. Everybody ride safe.